Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This time we are about to scrape data from Amazon search results page. On this page for each product we have information about product name, rating, prices and so on. And we want to retrieve all those information and put into unified JSON file. Moreover, some of those products are sponsored or have the very specific batch. In this case, it's Amazon's choice. And we want to retrieve also those information and put into the final JSON output. At the end of this tutorial, we will also automate the script using NA10. You will be able to play with two parameters, which are scrape to page, so the number of pages to scrape, and search phrase, which is simply the product that you want to scrape search results for. With the final NA10 workflow, we will be able not only to trigger the scraping script, but we will also transfer all scraping results into base row. So you will be able to see all scraping results in one place, in fully unified database. Let's start by installing Puppeteer. I will right now navigate into my preferred directory and create new folder, which is Amazon Script. Then I will go into this folder and open it in Visual Studio Code. After a few seconds when Visual Studio Code is opened, I use built-in terminal to create new project. So I use command npm init and basically click return for every question that I have to create new package JSON. Then I'm going to add Puppeteer to the project. So I use command sudo npm install Puppeteer. After entering my password, I will wait a minute until the Puppeteer is installed in the project. I can check it by clicking package JSON and as you can see Puppeteer is installed in version 21.1.1. As soon the Puppeteer is installed in the project, we can go to the next step. So first I'm going to add the new file, which is index.js, and I'm going to paste there the scraping script that you can also find in the description. Let's go quickly right now through this code and see what it actually does. After importing two libraries, which are Puppeteer and file system, I have specified the function to handle cookies pop-up. I will call it later in the code. Then I launched the browser, but I have turned off the headless mode to show you how the script actually works. After opening new browser page, I specified two parameters that you already know. The first one is search phrase. In my case is matecap because this is the product that I'm going to scrape results for. And the second one is scrape to page. So the number of pages that we want to scrape, of course, if they are available. Then script confirms those two parameters to the user by doing console log and goes to the amazon.com page. Then I want the script to close the cookies window if it shows up and enter the search phrase into the search box on Amazon website. Then when it's typed in, I want simply to click submit button. After that, script waits until search results show up and gets the URL of the search results page. Then we can move to the piece of code which is responsible for the actual scraping of search results. First, script informs the user about the number of page that is currently scraped. Then it checks whether the number of page to scrape exceeds the scrape to page parameter. Then the browser navigates to the URL of search results page and closes the cookies window if such exists and simply waits for the results on the page to show up. Next, we need to retrieve the data from all product cards that exist on this particular website. So we simply need to select all containers and get the data from specific fields of every product card. In our case, those fields will be product name. We will also check whether the product is sponsored or have a badge. We will also retrieve the base price and the current price, rating, ratings number, and the quantity that has been sold of the particular product in recent month. For some fields, script needs to perform additional modifications. So for this purpose, I used regular expressions. In this example, I want to retrieve only the number from the longer string, which indicates how many pieces of the specific product has been sold in recent around 30 days. If the particular field doesn't exist in a product card, the script will return in the output not applied. Finally, we want to take all those information, filter out empty results if such exist and store them into array. Next comes the piece of code that handles the pagination, which is actually responsible for clicking the next button and checking on which page currently the scraping is performing. So first we need to select the next button. In this case, it has selector S pagination next. 
The script checks whether the button is disabled or not. When it's not disabled, it simply calls the function to scrape the next page. However, when the button is disabled, it returns to the console information that all available pages have been scraped. At the end of this code, we simply call the function scrape page for the page one. And when the scraping process comes to the end, the script returns to the terminal information that scraping has been finished. Because in this example, we want to store all information that has been scraped from Amazon search results pages into the external file, we use the specific function for this purpose. And all information will be stored in external scraped data.json file. Of course, the script will return information to the terminal that data has been stored in such a file. Let's see right now how this script actually performs. So I will type in in the terminal command note index.js and after a few seconds I should see the browser opened up. But unfortunately instead of Amazon homepage I see the captcha to solve. I can do two things to solve this issue. The very first one is to change the entry page. So instead of going to Amazon homepage directly I will change the enter page to card page and it should solve the issue with showing up the captcha when opening the browser. Right now I execute the script once again and as you can see this time it runs smoothly. It enters the search phrase into the search bar and performs pagination. Finally, it stores all the scraped data into external file scrapeddata.json. The script works really well, but it's still quite possible that at some point it will be blocked by CAPTCHA. Moreover, the IP address when performing the scraping locally can be blocked by Amazon. To avoid such situations, I will use Scraping Browser API by Bright Data. It will do for me all the work connected with proxy rotation, solving CAPTCHAs and so on. And what's great, it can be implemented to the current script with just a few lines of code. To create a new scraping browser, I will go to the Bright Data dashboard and click View Proxy Products. Next, I will click Add, then Scraping Browser, and I will rename my scraping browser to Amazon Search Results. Finally, I will click Add, and after a few seconds, my scraping browser should be ready to work. In order to connect with it, I need to add the specific address to my code. So I will click integration examples and in this piece of code, I can find the WebSocket address that I need to copy and paste into slightly modified script. In this version of code, which is in file proxy.js, you can find it also in the description, I import the package Puppeteer Core. As an endpoint, I paste the address that I have just copied from Bright Data dashboard. Then I want to simply connect with this browser to execute the rest of the script. I've added also a piece of code to return the URL to developer tools so I can see how the scraping performs. I have also a little function to wait 10 seconds before the actual scraping starts. I wanted to have because I need some time to open developer tools to make the troubleshooting in case some errors appear. Finally, in this version of code, we will return all results of scraping to the terminal, not to the external file. So now when everything is ready, I can execute the script by typing in terminal node proxy.js. As you can see, I have already received the information in terminal that I can inspect the session under the specific address. So I copy it and paste in the separate browser window. After a few seconds when developer tools are opened up, I can monitor the session and see how the script performs. Of course, just how we wanted it to have, it types in the search phrase into the search bar and performs the pagination. When we go back right now to Visual Studio Code, we receive the confirmation in terminal that every page that belongs to search results is being scraped. And at the end, we receive the output in terminal. Finally, if we want to automate this script with NA10, the best way to do this is simply deploy the function to one of the cloud platforms. I will use Google Cloud Functions. First, I need to slightly adjust this function and you can find modified version in the description. Just as before, I use the library Puppeteer Core and an endpoint to scraping browser. But this time I want to retrieve the parameters from the URL. So both search phrase and scrape to page parameter will be retrieved exactly that way. In case the user doesn't provide the complete data to the query parameters, the very specific notification will show up. 
rest of the code remains exactly the same as before with the little modification at the end, because when the execution is successful, we want a send response sent to the user the result of the scraping. Let's right now deploy the script to Google Cloud Functions. So I go to Google Cloud Platform and search for Cloud Functions. Then I click Create Function. Next, I will rename it from function1 to Amazon Scrape, and I will also click that I allow unauthenticated invocations. Puppeteer requires at least 1 GB of memory, so this is how I change the settings. I will also change the timeout to 180 seconds, because scraping may take some time. Next, I will go to Visual Studio Code, copy last version of the script, and paste it in the window in Google Cloud Functions. I need to also indicate the entry point for my function, so I will search for it in my code. Actually, in this case, the entry point is scrape Amazon, so I will copy it and paste it in the field entry point. Finally, I need to update the dependencies in my package JSON, so I will go back right now once again to Visual Studio Code and I will copy dependencies that I have. In my case, of course, it's only one because this is Puppeteer. So I will copy it, go back to Cloud Functions and paste it under dependencies in this file. Finally, I can click Deploy. Usually deploying takes a few minutes, so please be patient. When the process is completed correctly, you should see the green icon next to the name of your function. Now I can check how my script performs on Google Cloud Functions, so I will copy the activation URL and open a new tab of the browser. Before activating this URL, I need to specify two parameters. The first one is of course search phrase, so exactly just as before I will use phrase matecap. And the second one is scrape to page, and I want to scrape to page 2. When everything works correctly, after about a minute, I should see in my browser window scraping results. And in my case, it looks that everything works fine because I have full scraping data in my browser. When I want to investigate the scraping process, I can go to Google Cloud Functions logs and there I should see the exact same confirmations as I had when I executed the script locally on my computer. Let's go right now to the final step, which is building automation for this scraping script. I will use HTTP request node to call this function in Google Cloud Functions. So in field URL, I paste the address of my function in Google Cloud Functions. Then I need to specify also query parameters. Those are two, of course. The first one is search phrase, which has value matecap, and the second one is scrape to page, which has the value two. Right now I will rename my node and change one more setting here, because sometimes our scraping script may result with an error. In such a case I don't want my workflow to stop, but I want to make another try. So I change the value of tries to 3. It's also quite possible that in our scraping results there are some duplicated values. So I want to remove them and for this purpose I use the item list node in NA10. Finally, I want to put all the scraping results into base row database. So I have already prepared the base row node in NA10 and I have mapped all the fields from the scraping output into the specific fields in my database in base row. So after execution of the workflow, all information that has been scraped from Amazon should be stored in those specific columns. Right now I will save the workflow and perform the test execution. As you can see, scraping takes place and I have sped up this process a little because normally it takes a bit longer. And finally, the process data is being uploaded to the base row database. And that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you like this solution that I presented to you today. If you like this video, please give it thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and to my newsletter, link in the description. And of course, see you soon. Bye.